Since moving to Singapore, we have noticed that certain ingredients are rather expensive here, especially in those tasty cheeses from Europe, which we learned to love so much. Hello world, welcome to United Cuisines, your show for international recipes. Recently I went to get some Italian ricotta in order to recreate our spinach cannelloni recipe. However, when seeing a 300% premium compared to prices that I'm used to from European supermarkets, I quickly figured that we should try to make it ourselves at home in this episode. The most important ingredient we will need is whole milk, pasteurized and not treated with ultra high temperature or UHT. Opt for the one with the highest fat content that you can find. This Japanese brand somehow provides over 4% but the usual whole milk with a 3% fat content will suffice too. Especially since we will add some heavy cream which will make sure that there is enough fat for our ricotta cheese. Moreover, some salt for taste and an acid that will do its magic and transform our creamy milk into ricotta. We went for white vinegar but let Lemon juice should work too. Let's grab a big enough pot, preferably non-stick and or one with a thick bottom that will handle the heat better and help us to prevent scorching our milk. Pour all the liquids in there together with the salt, give it a good stir and let's move over to the stove. Place the pot over medium heat and make sure to stir frequently for you really don't want to burn your precious milk. The goal is not to fully boil it, but rather to reach a temperature of 93 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This will take about 5 to 10 minutes and once the target temperature has reached, turn off the heat, mix in the vinegar and watch it do its magic. Within seconds the milk will start breaking down in different components, mainly whey and a curdled mass on its surface. Put on the lid and give it the process 20 to 30 minutes. After 25 minutes we start preparing our catch basin, but before pouring everything in there we grab a slotted spoon and admire the result. Gently place the curdled mass into the fine sieve and let it drain. If you have a cheese cloth, put it into your sieve. If not, a very fine sieve such as the one that we used here should do the trick. Make sure to place it over a bowl which will catch the whey in case you want to use it for other recipes such as a probiotic drink. Actually, classical ricotta is being made of whey that cheesemakers get as a byproduct in their cheese making process. We don't run such a big dairy operation here though, so as home cooks we opted for the whole milk ricotta here. Let the ricotta drain, the longer the drier the final result. It is up to you and what you want to use the ricotta for. We found 30 minutes to be about right. Subsequently place a big enough plate on top and turn it upside down. In total, this recipe with 2 liters of whole milk and a cup of heavy cream yielded almost 700 grams of ricotta, 500 of which we will use to recreate our spinach ricotta cannelloni for tomorrow's lunch. With the remaining 200 gram, let's quickly make a fresh spread. Just put it into your food processor, add a few basil leaves, tablespoon of olive oil and blend it well. Slice up and toast your favorite bread, spread a tablespoon of your freshly made ricotta basil cream on top and sprinkle some salt as well as freshly ground black pepper on it. Last but not least, enjoy! Buon appetito!